smell of burning flesh. Screams of agony mixed with the whistle of the falling bombs. Take them, he said. Take them and we trust the bag at me, said Bula, for the new order. He knew he would be killed. Still, he thought only of the new order, only about the dream, a dream for which I have lived. Dream that you have destroyed. Herr Brandt, we felt that we could protect you better by using the Sicilian. Sicilian? He is an American gangster. Sam D'Agusta, a common criminal, a mob boss. You give him the jewels to sell, and he steals the money. You say to me, how was I to know? You should know. Herr Brandt, we have made a terrible mistake. But steps are being to taken. To make matters worse, you come to me and say that you have killed him. How does this help? Oh, oh. Before he died, he told us where he put the money. In a safety deposit box in San Francisco. Now it's simply a matter of getting the money out of the box. How is this to be done? Very easily, Herr Brandt. We have De Augusta's wife. We'll hold her until the banks open in the morning. We'll take her there and have her open the box. In two days, I will be in Los Angeles. You will hand this money to me, Herr Bühler, or you will pay for your failure with your life. Herr Doctor, I accept the challenge. Nothing, nobody will stand in our way. Nobody. We'll just drill the box. We have the tools. I really wish that Mr. Railsworth was in. I've never done this sort of thing on my own authority it's before. Quite a normal procedure, Mr. Uh, uh, Ross. Ross, yes. Agent Claude Ann Brewster, Treasury Department. Ah. Well, I guess we're going to drill Mr. De Augusta's safe deposit box. Yes, we do have a court order to freeze Mr. De Augusta's estate, fellas, would you? San Francisco yes. National Bank. I do wish that Mr. Railsworth were here. I've never done this sort of thing on my own authority. Excuse me, please. Mrs. D. Augusta is here to open her husband's safe deposit box. Okay, sign the slip, please. be over a million dollars. Uh-huh. This I thought. Where money? Perfect place, too. Look at that. All right, fellas, pack it up. Look, I don't think we should let this leave the bank until Mr. Railsworth gets in. He should be in by 10.30. Love to, Mr. Ross, but I'm sure you've heard the federal government waits on no man. And this morning seems like it would include Mr. Railsworth. This is your receipt. Are you ready, fellas? I got a meeting with the director in exactly one hour. Go we'll move it. Mr. Ah, Mrs. De Augusta. She wants to look at her husband's safety deposit box. Oh, right. The box is. Oh, uh, that gentleman there is from the federal government. They drilled your box. Damn it! The car! Come on! Let's go, man. Get that tin off. Come on. This ain't funny. Man, you said we scored 10 grand. Yeah. That's got to be a mill here. Go on. Stand on it. Bueller says we got to get him. Savage says... Watch out for blondes with cute names. They look innocent and beautiful, but they can kill you. This one was named Tink. 
She's still on the threshold of my Hollywood apartment, her dress tighter than two sailors on liberty. The Russian made took her 3.5 automatic, swaying slightly in her alabaster hand. She screamed at me and fired. I took the lead high in my shoulder and felt that trap door open. I was down the rabbit hole again, down in the darkness where Father Time wears a frock coat and holds your life like a conductor's watch, the seconds ticking down to zero. I'd been here before, death's waiting room, the outer office to eternity. Savage says the ones with the cute names are hiding something. Tink was hiding a killer instinct. Yeah, watch out for blondes with cute names, but I hadn't. And now the old man in the frock coat was writing in his book under foolish, under dead, he was writing my name. Mark Savage, Private Eye. Yeah? Oh, yeah, sorry, Mr. Cross. Okay. Okay, be right down. Under foolish, under dead. He was writing my name. Lionel Whitney, Private Eye. Lionel, I'm in the elevator. We'll hurry up, we're late. I guess we'll be needing a cab. Get us a cab, Lionel! That's what I'm doing, sir! Well, guess this is getaway day. Sure have enjoyed your hotel. Come on, Ruth, they're crying out loud. Where the hell's Bunny? I got us a cab, Herman. Isn't Bunny down yet? I thought everybody was in the lobby when you knocked on my door. You only got one cab? Yes, sir. What do you do with the luggage? Send it parcel post? I guess you're right. I'll get another one, sir. Rush, 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 rush. Well, we don't get a move on. We're going to miss the plane. The boy genius booked us on the 11 o'clock. Well, sir, I figured with the rehearsal dinner being tonight, it would be better to have an early flight and everything so we could get back and unpack it. And what is this with three first class and one tourist? I'll take the tourist, sir. I don't mind. You don't mind, kid, huh? No, <laughs> no. Yeah. Who wears the luggage? That luggage left the room locked. Hi, stranger. Do you miss me? Yes. Excited about tonight? I'm going to pretend it's for real tonight, and then maybe afterwards I'll, I'll let you. You know? Boy, come on, you folks. You're, what are you laughing at? I hate San Francisco. The people are so rude. Give me that little blue bag. It's my cosmetic case. I need it. Did Daddy tell you the surprise? 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 What surprise? Yeah. Ooh, this cab smells awful. What makes taxis smell so bad? Drunks throw up in them. to get home. Why, no funny. Come on, let's go. Get the front seat, Lionel. Well, guess we're off to the airport.
tries. Well, all right. I was going to save it for this evening, but uh, all right. Since you are marrying my bunny, I don't have to tell you I do not need a son-in-law sitting at a floor desk at Gray Johnson and Smith taking security orders on a telephone like some kind of a dress clerk. <laughs> so I have uh, pulled rank with my department manager, and I'm having you move. Can you get this car to stop bumping? Move, sir? Yes, I had a long talk with Harrison Page, who's one of our top uh, institutional men. I told him you had the firepower, the horsepower, for the job. So from now on, you will be handling all the top institutional boys. Isn't that fantastic? You'll have your own office instead of a cubicle, and you'll be dealing with really important stockbrokers. Sir, I don't want you to think that I'm not really appreciative, but, well, you see, I've been giving the whole securities business a lot of thought lately. And with a recession and all, and people sort of getting out of the stock market, I think we're looking at a whole new decade in stocks about which, well, sir, if I might speak candidly, I'm not all that optimistic. Boom. When the going gets rough, the dress clerks jump out, the tigers jump in and take the profits. Now, it's been that way, it's going to continue to be that way. What you have to find out is, are you a dress clerk or a tiger? Well, you see, sir, what I was thinking was that maybe now, before Bunny and I have too many financial responsibilities, well, maybe now's the time to, as the saying goes, change horses. And, well, sir, I've been giving a lot of thought to commercial real estate. A lot of thought. Are you playing with me here, Lionel? No, sir, I'm not playing with you, sir. I've gone out on a limb for you. You start Monday. Oh, and don't you mess it up. Oh. Does this driver have to hit every bump in the road? I'm trying to get my mascara on. <laughs> What are you doing? That's my stuff. This is the final call. <laughs> work, my dear. Yes, we have Bibles. Hmm? We have the condensed New Testament and an illustrated book on the life of Christ. Praise his name. I'll take the King James Version. That'll be 10.50, sir. Do you know the name of the airport manager, by chance? Joseph Rupert. Rupert. Uh -huh. And who might be head of security? Head of security is Lieutenant Kleinhurst. Kleinhurst. Uh -huh. There's your change, sir. Thank you. And your Bible? <laughs> your kindness um, will be your reward. Thank you. Yes, please, sir. Timothy Flagg. Uh, I'm supposed to meet Lieutenant Kleinhurst here. Your airport manager, Mr. Rupert, told me that the man would meet me, and I can't seem to find him nowhere. You Lieutenant know? Kleinhurst is head of airport security. He could be anywhere. Maybe I could help your father. Quite possible. I'm traveling with a large sum of money. The proceeds from our May Carnival, the church's greater aid society. Oh, the Lord blessed us this year. And when I was about to board a plane with... I was one. Is there some place you can take me where I can be safe? You know, escort me there. I hate to be of any trouble, but it's quite a tidy sum. You of understand? course, right this way, Father. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you. Let me slick. Come on. Lionel, take my case. Ruth, get me a form. to read on the plane. I gotta call the office. I'm trying to be nice to your folks, but they're treating me like a giant bag of dog chow. They're really biting my tongue these last few days. Nice. I mean, Daddy life almost kills himself just so you can get a big break. Institutional sales. I don't like him making decisions about my career without asking me. I don't want the institutional department. I'm bored with the stock market. I want something with more, um... Uh... Lionel, Lionel, I'm only going to tell you this once. This is my life, too. Now, 
We are going to have our house in University Park, and we're going to take trips, and we are going to have a wonderful life. I don't want to live in University Park. I don't like it there. I told you that, and I told your father that. You are angry because he paid for the down payment, and you think you think he's going to act like he owns the house just because he paid for it. Exactly. That's exactly what I think. He's going to come over there and tell me the lawn needs cutting, and that I should paint the front door, and damn it, bun, that's not the way I want to live. I am going to pretend that we never had this conversation. I am going to erase it from my mind, Lionel. I am going to pretend that it was five minutes ago and we never said any of this. Wait here, Father. I'll try to find Lieutenant Kleinhurst. My angina. I took a glycerin tablet. The, the kind sergeant told me so I could lay down in here. Oh, oh, sure, Reverend. There's a sofa in the locker room through that door. Are you sure you're okay? Oh, with the good Lord's help, everything will be just fine. Take these. We gotta get through security. He came down here. There's no way out. You guys check the bathrooms. All right, you and I watch the gates. San Francisco Memorial Hospital. Clancy Turner's room, please. How you doing? <laughs> well, it depends on who you who you're asking. <laughs> the question is, how, how you doing, baby? I'll live. It's the last time I borrowed from one of Sam D. Augustus long sharks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's that's why I'm calling you, Clancy. See, uh, I, I had a little time in my schedule, man. So uh, I decided, well, since somebody you know killed old Sam D. Augusta, I'd drop by his bank and make a small withdrawal on on your behalf. Those guys are mob. They'll kill you, E.L. Look, Clance, I got your money, man. But I can't get it to you right now. You see, uh, some uh, complicated circumstances. You understand? Final call for Continental Global Airlines Flight 365 to Los Angeles. All passengers holding tickets should be on board. Clance, look, uh, I'm late, man. I, I, I gotta go. Kiss Maggie and the kids for me, all right? Uh, Clance, I love you, man. I'll be in touch, you. Yeah. Close them up, Marie. Which one's white? I am. That makes you Kingsley. Yes, sir. Okay, but I'm uh, Buster Hutchins, CGA check pilot. I'll be riding the jump seat to L.A. I want you to do exactly what you do normally. I'll try and stay out of your way. Do you want to hear the speech or not? Might as well. I've never heard it before. Well, this is a random flight check. Federal law requires I report any procedure that's questionable according to FAA flight standards. I'll be evaluating ground operations and route procedures as well as overall service to the customers. If I should find this crew to be in need of a checkup, I have the authorization of assigning you to the flight training simulator in Palmdale, California. Do I make myself clear? We all know Palmdale's a toilet. Now, what about a cup of java? Let's take the soup can upstairs. Give me 
Uh, it's got all my perfumes in it. I guess, I guess I'll just go on back and uh, find my seat. We'll wait for you outside the gate. Lionel. I'll miss you. Okay, me too. San Francisco newspaper? News and Evening Star. No, thank you. CGA 365 Heavy, final check control. Maintain 350 Diamond 4 departure, squawk 4141. Departure controlled 124. You're cleared to LAX. You're going off the scope. Have a good one. That's it, Roger. Thanks for the safe out. Adios. Hey, how about a sandwich up here? I didn't have any breakfast. Did we ask Karen? Oh, you want anything, Hutchins? Oh, yeah. Um, I would like from now on for Navigator Kingsley here to use his shoulder straps on takeoff. Uh, I was working the transponder, Captain. No sweat. Got to try it. I'm off to the head, fellas. Be right back. Enjoying your flight, madam. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see what we got here. Lionel Whitney. Hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Herman LaCrosse announced the wedding of their daughter to Lionel Whitney in St. Veronica's Church of Bel Air, California. Your Lionel, short 5,000 shares, Gusty. How did this racial end up with all the money? I thought you had the Augusta's wife. I thought she was going to open the box for us. All I know is when we got in there, this guy had already cleaned it out. We chased him to the airport. Look, Colonel, he can't get off that plane. He has the money. All we got to do is have our people in L.A. when it lands. And he's ours. OK. I want that terminal in L.A. covered. I don't care how many men it takes. I'm gonna be on the next plane out of here. Make me a reservation. I was down there again, sitting on the old man's faded black couch, the one with the bloodstains. Old men and dead hookers lounged there with me. The voices of my companions came through a rusty wire and spilled it at me through a broken speaker, screeching my obituary. Mark Savage, Hollywood tough guy, iced by a dippy dame with a 10-pound Russian cannon. I should have known she was a wrong go the day her mother came into my office spilling cigarette ashes and wheezing at me through yellow teeth. Find my daughter, she said. And I found her and she'd punched my ticket with cold lead and sent me to this place. Savage says, if you want to know about a girl, take a look at her mother, because that's what she'll be in 20 years. Her mother was a killer, and under all that beauty, so was she. I'd ignored my own advice, and so I got what I deserved. Oh, boy. Is this seat taken? Uh, no, 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 go ahead. <clears throat> I was in B-23, next to this yucky stockbroker. Kept trying to get me to invest in his sex life. Martha Gribb, I'm a singer. Lionel Whitney. Uh, I'm a uh, stockbroker. Wingtips, conservative tie, aqua velvet, the whole depressing package. Oh, what, what kind, kind of, of stockbroker? <laughs> Well, I'm in institutional sales. It's really a great field. Uh, uh, I mean, you get to go to lunch with important executives and, uh, well, go to New York and, uh, well, it's just really uh, um, institutional, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Were you in San Francisco on business? No, no, I was here with my fiancé and her family to buy our wedding silver and Bunny's trousseau. Bunny's my fiancé. And then Mr. Lacrosse had some business. He's... Bunny's father and also my boss at Gray Johnson Smith in L.A. Mm -hmm. 
And what we did was, well, uh, uh, he and I went to the San Francisco office. It was, uh, well, a, a terrific holiday, and we had lots of fun. Listen, maybe you can help me. I'm trying to decide on a new name, a stage name. And my agent made these up. He doesn't think Martha Gribb's a winner. Sissy Sherman, Amber Lane. No, I don't like that one. Gigi Wilson, Mimi St. Cloud. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Oh, lousy, huh? I have this theory. Beware of girls with cute names. They're hiding something. That's why you're marrying a girl named Bunny? Oh, I'm sorry. I was only kidding. No, no, it's okay. She was a cheerleader at SCN. That's what everybody calls her. I'm sure she's darling. She is, she is. We, uh, we have a lot in common. Like what? Well, what we do is we, we spend time, um, we like to read. And she's really got a terrific sense of humor, and, and she collects antique chess sets. Oh, and, you play chess? Uh, no. No, I, I don't. I watch sometimes when Bunny and her father play. You play Clue? I haven't played in years, but it was a terrific game, I remember. I got one in my bag. You want to play? Yeah, let's. Oh, terrific. Lionel, it's going to be okay. I mean, when people get married, they tend to have second thoughts and evaluate where they're going. And the thing you have to do is listen to yourself. Listen to what you want. You know what I want? You know what I'd like to do? Mm. I'd like to, I don't know, like maybe buy a boat and go sailing. Just me and Bunny up the coast of Vancouver, the inland waterways, give Bunny and me a chance to get to know one another a little better. Get to know one another? Well, she was very quick with us. Only three months. We have this, um, sexual attraction and, and, well, I don't really get along with her father. As a matter of fact, I think he was about to can me when we announced our engagement. And subconsciously, maybe I was trying to save my job and, and, and... Bunny was trying to get back at her folks for something, and then, well, it was we, we sort of got caught up in it. It was, it was fun and, and, and parties, and did I tell you she's very pretty? No, you didn't. You be Colonel Mustard. He's an adventurer like you. And I'll be Miss Scarlet. She's sexy and has a past. Do you think daughters turn out to be like their mothers? I mean, do they end up looking and talking like their mothers 20 years later? I don't know, Lionel. I guess it's possible. I suppose you'll have to roll the dice and find out. You're getting the patch through now. Your aunt's okay. I'm trying to get through to Don Rico. Donato? Donato! Yeah! Yeah, I'm with Tommy. All right, hold on. Get me this thing fast, Chicky. Your Aunt Celeste is okay. These creeps picked her up outside the funeral home and dumped her out at the bank. She was really bummed out over your Uncle Sam being killed. And you know, she's kind of in shock or something. But I had Dr. Goldberg look her over. Who, what, where, why? Give me those, Donnie. Her name is Weaker Figure. Your Uncle Sam was selling some jewels for a Nazi named Bueller. We got no first name or nothing. Your uncle tried to stiff him, and these Nazis killed him. Where? We ain't sure yet. We picked up one of his guys, but the guy didn't stand up too well under pressure. Mike and me chopped a couple of fingers. He went out before we can brace him. I need a town, Donnie. Until I get a town, I'm sitting here on the ground with my finger up my nose! Maybe L.A. The guy was yelling something sounded like L.A. when he fuzzed out on us. All right, get what he knows. Then help him find the river. One other thing. Your Aunt Celeste says these guys, Nazis, Chasing a shine outside the bank. Nobody knows who he is, but Celeste says he had a valise. Oh, terrific, terrific. I love this more and more every minute. L.A. So, let me see. I'm in the library with you at last. Um, I suggest that Professor Plum killed Mr. Green in the library with a rope. Nope. My turn. Mm. I think that Mrs. White killed Professor Plum in the kitchen what? with a lead pipe. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I think that's it. I don't have those. Yep. Oh! 
<laughs> I would have had that if I could have got into the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So what kind of songs do you sing? Oh, all kinds. Um, pop, 40s, some show tunes, a little crossover country western. Boy, I'd love to hear you. I got two weeks solid at the town club. It's a little nightclub off Sunset. My agent says Patty Page started out there about a million years ago. It's my first real booking. I've been at the Music Conservatory in New York for three years, but it's time for me to sort of bust loose and take the shot. Must be exciting. Oh, is it ever? I mean, when I'm up there, you know, with the mic in my hand, singing a number, entertaining's like being on top of the highest mountain. And if they love you, they applaud. They stand up and applaud. My heart races, and you can't get enough air, and you feel warm all over. And if they don't? It's horrible. It's just horrible. But the way I look at it, you never get the highs if you don't risk the lows. Yeah, I guess you're right. Gee, I sure hope you come and see me. I'll write it down for you. I wish I could. Well, who knows, who knows? Trouble is with the rehearsal dinner tonight and all our friends coming in from all over, family and everything. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah, anyway. LAX to CGA 365 Heavy. This is LA Radar Control. You're on the scope. Welcome to Smogsville. Roger, LA 250 knots. Well, I gotta tell you, fellas, except for a few little minor goodies, it was a smooth, well-handled flight. I'm late for a check-up to San Diego. They always book me too tight. I tell you what, if you can put this thing down in one piece and arrange for a special car to meet me at the jet pad, take me over to CGA flight control, I'll uh, sign you guys off and we'll skip Palmdale this year. What do you say? Hmm? This is CGA 365 Heavy to L.A. Tower, requesting a ground unit meet us at the dock. Special transport to CGA flight operations. We've got a check pilot with a tight one. Continental Global Airlines, flight 365, now arriving from San Francisco at gate 19. This guy is not getting past us. Anybody screws up on this, he's in deep, deep trouble. He's not getting past us. It's gotta be him. He's got the bag. How did he work that? Move it. Take five guys. Cover every exit from the field. I'll take the rest and check the terminal. Let's go. I guess they're already in the terminal. I guess. Have a terrific life, Lionel. You too. Do you believe airline food? You can retread a tire with that omelet. Yes. Will Mr. Lionel Whitney please come to the white courtesy telephone? Oh, go on, get it. Come on, let's go. Come on. Mr. Lionel. I'll be right back. White courtesy telephone, please. <laughs> this is Lionel Whitney. Oh, uh, Mr. Whitney. Uh, yeah, this is Sam Mayfield, your limousine driver. Oh, uh, limousine? Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Gustafsson and all the folks down at Grave Johnson sent me to pick you up, sir. Gusty did that? No kidding? The limousine? Yes, sir. He says to me, Sam, he says, Mr. Whitney is getting married, so you go on down there and take him wherever it is that he wants to go. Well, that's terrific. What a terrific thing. Now, I have Mr. Johnson's personal limousine parked at the curb. Uh, I'm down at the baggage claim on the phone here. Now, if you 
tell me what it is you got on, I'll be able to find you around the luggage area. Yes, yes, great, good idea. Um, I'm real tall, dark hair, and I'm wearing a uh, gray three-piece suit, maroon tie. That's fine, sir. Uh, Mr. Whitley, welcome home, sir. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Yes. Well, what the hell was that all about? Limo. The guys from uh, Gray Johnson sent a limo for us to pick us up. Isn't that great? Well, why not? Let's go. Well, I hope he was smart enough to make it a stretch. We'll never get all the luggage in one car. Scotty Maitland, curb attendant. Walked to the five-minute zone. You have to move your limousine, buddy. I just got it. Hey, come on, Ace. Don't hand me this. I do this thing for a living. The gig is hard enough as it is. Now, just take your car and you move it around. Oh, yeah. come on now, Ma. Be a buddy, will you? It'll take me 20 minutes in this traffic. Look, my people will be out in a minute, OK? Look, this will be a pal, all right? Please, hey, do me. Hey, hey, look, look, come on, come on. My supervisor catches me taking money for this. I'm out of my kish kebab. I'll tell you what, look, come here. You go inside, you see if you can find your guy, understand? All right. But you make it fast. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Yes, yeah, go on. Uh, I'll be right back. Would you go on? The white zone is for loading and unloading of passengers only. No parking, please. The white zone is for loading and unloading of passengers only. No parking, please. <laughs> Mr. Whitney? Sam? <laughs> well, can, can I help you with your luggage? Yeah. Yeah. Bags. yeah, we got a lot of bags. Let's get to it, shall we? Come on, let's go. Yes, sir, right away. I guess you folks must have had a mighty nice trip. Huh? Oh, driver! Driver, put my cosmetic case in the back seat. Yes, ma'am. Lionel, will you let the boy get the bags? That's what he's paid for. Yes, I'll get those bags, Sam, and get them done. Y'all just, just relax. I'm doing it, sir. You know, y'all must be mighty happy about the wedding this evening. My wife, Mary Ellen, she said, Sam, you sh you sure do love wedding. Then I guess I do. All them fine cakes and, and crunchy cookies. And, oh, I'll get that stuff. Folks just throwing rice. Driver, would you please? We're running late as it is. Let's I go. I thought I told you to put that little blue bag in the back seat, driver. The blue, the blue bag. Blue bag. In the, blue bag in the back seat. Easy as pie. Yes, sir. Oh, I'll get that, sir. Why don't you folks just get in the coach and make yourself comfortable? All right? And I'll take care of all this. It's just gone. The white zone is for loading and unloading of passengers only. No parking, please. Hey! Okay, we'll be on our way now. Watch the fingers, doors closing fast. Got stuck, so, uh, uh, we don't know what's causing it. We've been meaning to get it fixed. I guess you folks sure must be glad to be back in the City Angels, huh? Yeah, we've been having ourselves some great, great weather. What are you talking about? I read where you had a third stage smog alert. I don't pay that no mind, sir. You see, uh, my wife's sister, why, she's the barometer in the family. She has emphysema. <laughs> now, I figure like this. If the old girl's breathing, then, well, the weather's not that bad. Now, if she goes to wheezing, <laughs> then we got ourselves some smog. <laughs> Driver, would you mind? I could use a little silence. Oh, yes, ma'am. You want to hear another word out of Sam? You just sit on back and relax, because I want y'all folks to surely enjoy this ride. I'm not much of a talker. My wife always says, Sam, you're probably one of the most quietest men I ever know in my life. I was always sitting around watching television. You know what the kids would do? I want y'all folks to relax, though. I want you to get your home safe and quiet-like, and I want y'all to kick up your heels back there. I got some sodas for you if you want. <laughs> Now, Lionel, be 
on time. The rehearsal dinner's at 9 o'clock sharp. And 9 o'clock dinners mean wear a tie. I said wear a tie, Mrs. LaCrosse, and I'm always on time. We have all our friends from Michigan coming in, so try to remember names. It makes a better impression. Well, would you take a leg? We've got to get the service for lunch at 2 o'clock. Now, he might freeze you to We might freeze you up here. Yes, sir. Come on right up. <clears throat> would somebody get that telephone? Now, make sure Fred orders the boutonnieres on Friday, and for the love of God, be sure that the ushers pick up their tuxedos by 10 tomorrow. Rose, in 20 minutes, it's 2 o'clock when you get the lead out. Herman, will you stop yelling at me? Gonna miss me? Yes, Bunny, of course. Why do you keep asking me that? Because I'll miss you, silly. I'll see you tonight. Oh, would you please shake the light? We've got to get the Sherman into a black or white. Will you stop watching me, Hearn? The Sherman should just wait. And whose wedding is it anyway? And where's my little blue bag? Mighty nice folks, them uh, lacrosses. Oh, yeah, real nice. Yeah. That Mrs. Lacrosse really knows how to snap a whip, doesn't she? <laughs> Do you mind if I ask you a hypothetical question? Oh, what kind of question is that? A not for real question. Oh, 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 Do you think that girls turn out to be like their mothers, I mean, like 20 years later? You know, I'm glad you asked me that question. Because in the Mayfield family, well, we got ourselves nothing but some girls. You know, except for my me and my brother Tom, counting all the cousins, I say they must be oh, about 15 girls. Well, I've been watching them girls just go on up just like weeds, you know? And I tell you, each and every one of them is a splitting image of the mother. Now, now what I say is, uh, you want to know about the daughter? Watch the mama. Savage says that, too. Of course, with a thing like that, there are no sure rules. No, I guess you got to depend on the odds. Yeah, I, I suppose you do. Where to, sir? 2365 Elm Circle Drive, North Hollywood. Yes, sir. Take a right on Flower. It's about a block and a half up. Take a left on Flower. It's about two blocks up. That's it there. Park it uh, right in front of the blue dots. Yes, sir. That's it. Stick with them. He's long gone. Let's get out of here. What is this? It's 
sardines and peanut butter. Nobody puts sardines on peanut butter. You do if you like it. Then you eat it. Sam? Sam? Hey, hey, come back here. Hey, Greg, you made it. How'd you get Hey, nine out of ten guys had their front door keys and porch pods. Whitney, I'm surprised at you, buddy. Hey, listen. Gosh, it's great to see you. It's great to see you. <laughs> hey, so what's up, huh? Was that you spinning those donuts out there on the street a minute ago? You'll never believe what just happened to me. The guys from the office sent a limo to pick me up at the airport. The driver was bringing me back. All of a sudden, about six guys in a sedan are chasing this guy. He blows out of here in the limo. And then takes off running. I had to use my karate on one of them to get away. Ah, you're kidding me, huh? Do, do I look like I'm kidding? Look at me, I'm shaking like a leaf. I never used my karate before. Mr. Okahama says you're not supposed to use it in anger. It's a sport. I feel so guilty about that. Well, I'll tell you one thing, it sure works. Damn near kicked that guy into next year. Gonna get my bag, have a drink, take a shower. What am I gonna do with this car? Hey, Fred, take a look at the registration. Get me the name of the owner. Okay, okay. Excelsior Limousine Company, uh, Bell Garden. That's my suitcase. This must be one of Ruth LaCrosse's cosmetic bags that she's always braying about. That limo driver must have unloaded my bag at their house. I have to switch them at the rehearsal. Boy, this week is turning into a nightmare. Oh, now, you just wait till you and Bunny get to your wedding night. I mean, take it from me, man. She's dynamite. I'm what, I mean, what I mean is she's, she's probably dynamite. I mean, that's just a guess, Whit. Sounded like you know firsthand. Hey, Bunky, give me a break, huh? I went out with her first, remember? But you said you hadn't gone... I said we never made it, and, and we didn't. But I, I was talking spiritual stuff. You know, transcendental meditation, oneness of soul. Come on, let's not make a big thing out of nothing, okay? I'm gonna call this limo company. Hey, look, buddy, uh, can I can I borrow the Datsun? I I gotta check on the tuxedos and the boutonnieres. I gotta pick up my folks at the airport. Probably miss a dinner. They don't get in till nine, but uh, I'll make the room. Oh, great. You're a pal, buddy. Hey, hey listen. Uh, how about Bunny? She never really liked me, you know? I, I mean, not, not really. Not after the first time. Hey, uh, I'll see you, Bunky, huh? No, no sweat, right? No, no sweat? Five, 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 six, seven, eight, seven. Officer, I'm the one who reported the car stolen. Sure, it happens all the time. Guy boosts a car when he's high on coke or poppers, uh, decides to return it when he comes down no, again. I told you, the guys at the office sent the car for me. Look, we check up Mr. Gustafson. They didn't send a limo for you. And my bet is when we get the latents off the steering wheel of the mirror, they're going to have a nice set that matches your fingerprints perfectly. Yes, I told you. I drove the car home Watch after the driver head. took off. No, please don't do this. I'm supposed to get married on Saturday. Run over 
Bruchet. Bruchet Rickleman Attorneys. Here to see Mr. Lionel Whitney. I said my attorney. It's you. It's you. You're the one who got me in here. You stole that car. This is the man who stole the car. He's the one that stole the car. Oh, I demand that he be arrested immediately. Hold it. Ron Rusche, I went to public defender's office. Uh, I think he's going to be OK. We may want him isolated, maybe do a psychiatric on the man. A what? Why, um, I'll try and keep him quiet. Just give me a little bit more time. OK. But if you can't, I'm going to have to haul him out of here. I understand, officer. We just need some background information for office, that's all. Mr. Whitney, please. Yeah. Switch the set. You're no attorney. And you're no car thief either. But we're both in here just the same, so would you lighten up, Lionel? Look, it's just a petty car beef, man. They're not gonna tube you for that. Tube me? Yeah. What do you mean? I mean, look, especially since it's your first offense, man. You see, you draw a little probation, you watch your step, keep your nose clean, and. The most they can do is take away your voting rights. And the way things are, who can pick a candidate? Listen anyway? up, you. I'm not about to get busted for this. You stole that car. This is the man that stole the car. There's no, no doubt about hey. it. It's a frame up. Hey, knock it off. Hey, this guy's going to throw you into the headboard. Look, Lionel, I, I, I came down here to tell you I'm sorry. I was moving fast, man. I was improvising. And, and you, you just got in the middle, that's all. I, I, I've come down here to help you out, OK? Who in the hell are you? All right. All right? OK, I'll tell you. Guys. OK. I feel you have a right to know, sir. Uh-huh, sir. But I'm putting my life on the line by telling you this. I'm Agent Yoon Stogel, ATF. I've been working on a big international smuggle, brown Mexican snow. That's unprocessed heroin. It's been coming into Los Angeles on donkeys. Donkeys or mule is uh, what we call a carry. Alcohol, see. tobacco, and firearms. That's your agency. That's huh? correct. Who's sir. head of it? Maury Feldman. Wrong. It's Abe Whitfield. I happen yes. to be a law enforcement buff. You're a charlatan, not you. You're a trickster. Ah, but that still doesn't change the fact that you're about to take a fall for GTA. Now you're going to have to cooperate with me. I'm not cooperating with you. First you're uh, 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 step and fetch it, That's then you're a Sidney Poitier, now you're Ephraim Simbus. Why don't you just get out of here and leave me alone, okay? Very well. Very well. I'll just call your father in law on the way out. No, no, no. He, he killed me. Why are you doing this to me? Hey, sit down. I know, uh, you better stay frosty, man. That guy wants to throw you into the hamster cage. Now, Lionel. 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 Now, I think $500 will get us off with the limousine service. And I may know a bail bondsman that can get you loose. If you pay them $500, what happens? Well, they don't press charges, and everything just turns to dust. Get me out of here. Hey, would you slow up? Go away, leave me alone. Wait a minute, I'm the guy who got you out of there. Yeah, you're also the guy who got Don't me in there. Don't you want to know who I am? Oh, by all means, this ought to be great. No, 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 let me guess. You're an astronaut, right? You and John Glenn and Mickey Mouse got a bad re-entry, and you just happened to land in the front seat of that limo? My name is E.L. Turner. I'm a bank teller downtown. My ex-wife stole my daughter. You see, I have custody of her because she drinks. Well, she hired these bodyguards, and they're the ones that have been chasing me to try and beat me up. Look, all I want is my daughter back. I think my wife is trying to have me killed. I hate this one worst of all. Look, Mr. Whitney, uh, Mr. I Whitney. have a bag in the back of your car. I was wondering if you've seen it. Uh, oh, oh that's why you got me out. You left your bag in the back seat of my car. You want your bag. What's in it? Money? Hot watches? Uh -huh. Those guys sure weren't looking for Easter eggs. No, no. Just my insulin shot. Or, or you're a diabetic. I'm a diabetic. Right. And I can't get a of prescription course, here. Not. Just shut up. Shut up. Look, uh, you want your suitcase? Fine, fine. The quicker I get you out of my life, the better. You know, Mr. Whitney, I hate to see you so exercise. I read somewhere that four out of five cardiac conditions are brought on by just such hyperactivity. Okay, okay, look, 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 don't, don't say another word. I don't have your suitcase, at least not now. I put it in the back of my Datsun. My best man has it. I thought it was Ruth's, and I can't get to it until the wedding rehearsal tonight, so I'll contact you, okay? Now, I'll meet you at the church. No, I, I don't want you within 10 miles of that wedding rehearsal. I'm not telling you where it is. Oh, I know where it is. Uh, you're getting married in Bel Air at uh, St. Veronica's. It's a lovely place. 
How did you find that out? Oh, I know everything about you, Mr. Whitney. I know about your blood type. I know what kind of books you read. I know about your magnifying glass. You went through my luggage, didn't you? That's how you know. And while we're on the subject, where is my bag? Oh, I left it at Baby Ruth's and Harlem Herman's by mistake. He <laughs> cracks about my in-laws. You know something? Really if you marry into that family, about you deserve to go to Camarillo. Stay away from me, you got it? I don't care what Mr. Okahamu says. If I see you again, I'm going to kick your head off. Miss Turkey Neck. Let's bring her right out. Isn't she terrific? How about another nice round of applause? She's dynamite. Oh. Okay, you boozers right, and rapers, yeah, calm down. The next show starts in 40 minutes. Yeah, some kind in the back who wants to buy you a drink. dinner. It is. Well, aren't you supposed to be there? Ten minutes ago, you were great. I mean, you were really, really great. Isn't this place awful? Look at the outfit they had me wear. I love what you're wearing. They have a stripper. She didn't go on because she said she got some bad shrimp. But I think she's just chicken. No, no, no. What counts is you went on and you were giving it your all. You were trying. If they aren't smart enough to realize you're great, then it's their loss. This place is a bummer. No, no, it's not a bummer. It's great. It's, you're great. <laughs> You're wonderful. So, how's Colonel Mustard? Talked to Professor Plum lately? He's dead, remember? Mrs. White beat him to death with a pipe. <laughs> yes, what do you want? We're having a private conversation. Please leave this table immediately. Lionel Whitney. Don't you know my name? This came off my suitcase. I got my hand in my pocket, and there's a 38 pointed at your belly button. Now, you and the chirp here, just get up slowly, and we'll leave this place real quiet. No, no, look, please, leave me alone. I don't know what's going on. I know you think I do, but I don't. I really don't. Just do what I say. All right, but leave her out of it. Don't take her. You got her. You blow this place, and she's going to scream her head off to the cops. Now, come on. Oh, it's been like this all afternoon. I said, let's go. Please don't do this. I'm supposed to get married oh, on, on Saturday. Uh, Stifle him, will you? Tommy found this joint. People lived here, took off and went to Miami. The house is empty. Come on, get the lights on. Don't set off the alarm. Oh, well, can't happen. We shorted it and took out the batteries. The singer at the club where we picked him up. I got it! I think I got it! Hey, that's the patio! Shut it off! So, you're Whitney. Yes, look, there's been a mistake. I don't... 
What I do when I don't get the straight poop from you is take you in the kitchen and cut off three of your fingers. You what? Don't what me, honey boy. You heard me. I like to get that straight. Okay? We're straight, right? <laughs> I like this guy, Chip. He gets the picture fast. I like you, Lionel. I'd offer you a chair, honey, but we ain't got one. You don't mind standing, I hope. Please let us go. We didn't do anything. I don't even know what this is all about. Oh. I like that, Lionel. You don't tell the skirt nothing. That's good. <laughs> Real good. How you coming with the power, Philip? I hate working in the dark! start at the top. You work for this guy, Turner, right? Who? Turner. E.L. Turner. Con man. They call him 10-speed. You're one of his operatives, I'm, right? No, no. I'm a stockbroker. I'm getting married on Saturday. All of a sudden, people are chasing me See? and kidding. Already, I'm getting tired of you, Lionel. And I'm beginning to think about kitchens and butcher knives. If you get my drift. Is E.L. Turner a black guy, good-looking, about medium height and muscular, about 35 or 6? <laughs> That's the guy. Okay, okay. Well, sir, what this man has done to me this afternoon would fill a book. See, I was coming home from San Francisco, and he claimed to be a limo driver, and he picked us up, me and my fiance and, and her family at the airport. He drove us home, and a bunch of guys started chasing us outside my apartment. Then I was arrested for stealing the limo, and this, um, a Turner, if that's his name, got the charges dropped, and he says he left his valise in the limo, but the well, hold it. Okay, valise. Didn't, 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 what's his face say something about a valise? Helmet, yeah. Get it! Well, that's all. Um, the valise is in my Datsun because I thought it was Ruth LaCrosse's cosmetic bag and I won't be able to get it back to um, Turner until the wedding rehearsal tonight at 10 o'clock. And that's all I know. You know this guy? Well, let's hear it. He's one of the ones who was chasing Turner. Well, what he is in fact. He's a Nazi. Now, you know me, I'm a patient guy. But when these guys go on and pop my Uncle Sam, shoot him in the head. I'm losing my patience! Sam D'Augusta is, was your uncle? Yeah. You got anything more for me, Chicky? Huh? 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 I told you everything. I think you should lose a couple of fingers, huh? Huh? Get him out of here. Get him out of here. All right. This guy, Hammett. He says my uncle was fencing some diamonds for some Nazi named Bueller. He says my uncle Sam sold the diamonds, kept the whole bundle, told Bueller to go whistle for it. <laughs> so Bueller and his Nazi friends, they put one on Uncle Sam's forehead. In his forehead. This makes me mad. They pick up my Aunt Celeste, and they scare her silly. She tells them that money from the sale of the diamonds is in Uncle Sam's safety deposit box. So they drag poor Aunt Celeste down there to open the box. That's where I'm missing a piece. How the money gets from the box to this guy, 10-speed turn is the mystery, see? But he ends up with it, and they're chasing him. The money's fine. I mean, I like money. But for this money, I do not lust. But for killing my Uncle Sam. This is something for which I will demand payment! I don't know how to help you. I'm just a stockbroker. Don't believe it, Mr. T. When I picked him up, he and the uh, skirt were talking about greasing some guy named Plum. They hit him with a pipe. No, no, no. That's a game, Plue. We were talking about a game of Plue. Give me the, give me the number. You got it? Come on. You call this number there. You ask for that Nazi goofball Bueller. And you tell Bueller you got his money. 
And you tell them, show up at the church at 10 tonight. No, at the rehearsal? Come on, that's my wedding rehearsal. Please don't. Hey, hey, Chicky, what do you think? I care about your wedding rehearsal? I ain't fooling around here. Do it! I don't believe you. Where do people like you come from? For me? <laughs> oh, I come from the Bronx. Make my home in Manhattan. Fifth Avenue. Bueller here. This is Lionel Whitney. I've got the money. It's in a valise. If you come to St. Veronica's Church in Bel Air at 10 tonight, I'll give it to you. Where's Hammond? I want to talk to Hammond. Where the hell was Lionel? Hmm? We have a nice rehearsal dinner and the groom doesn't even show up. Well, he better be inside or I don't know how in the name of God we'll ever be able to have the rehearsal. Even the best man didn't show up. Fred is picking up his folks at the airport. This is a private wedding rehearsal. Only members of the wedding party are invited. Uh, I'm Walt Rogers, but everybody calls me Skipper. I'm the assistant organ master. If you need anything around here, just ask for a Skipper, okay? You know, the organ's been acting up on the e-stops, but I think it's gonna be all right. You folks have a nice rehearsal here. Skipper, remember, Skipper, okay? <laughs> Father O'Brien? Well, now, where the hell is Father O'Brien? Shh. Left the hotel ahead of us. Well, then he should be here. He can't have a rehearsal without a priest. Or the groom, or the best man. It's a disaster, I tell you. A disaster, and it can't get any worse. <laughs> Hello, my darlings. How is everyone? Hi. Mo, go around the side. Tiny sit on the girl. Lionel, did you see that Datsun in the parking lot? No, but I see it pulling up in front of the church. Ah, oh, traffic was a dog. Hey, <laughs> how you doing, Bunky? Got the old butterflies yet? <laughs> Who are you guys? We're friends of the bride. Do you still have that bag, the black one? Yeah. You want it? Listen, kid, why don't you go on inside and tell everybody that Lionel will be in just a minute, okay? Go ahead. Okay, Whitney, just walk in there with this bag. Let's see what happens. Those Nazis ought to make a move for it. Just let them have the bag. We'll take it from there, okay? Go. Go! Started. Where were you, you dummy? You've been keeping us waiting for half an hour. Hello. Hello. Well, who the hell are you? I'm Father Dwight Morris. Where's Father O'Brien? I'm sorry. Father O'Brien won't be able to Well, make... why not? He was in a car accident on the way over from the hotel. He banged his head and they took him to the hospital. He called and asked if I'd sub for him. He says not to worry, he'll be fine. All right, well, let's get on with it. I don't... That's All right, on. everyone gather around up here oh, by the right. altar. The bridesmaids on the right, uh, groomsmen on the left. <laughs> Who are the parents of the bride? We are. Over here, please. Hey, who are you, man? I'm Father O'Brien. He took my robes. Hey. I'll take that, son. We can't have you go through this carrying a suitcase. Give it here, please. What's going on up there? Stay right where you are.
Rehearsal's over. I think we better just control ourselves, man. Myself? He's not I'll control it. myself. He's gonna do this. Get out! Hey, hey, I said get out! You don't know what you're doing. Hey, look! I know exactly what I'm doing. Before you come any closer, I'm instructed to inform you that my hands and my feet are considered lethal weapons. And if you proceed from this point on, it's at your own risk. I have a third degree black belt. Me too. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, I get, all right? Hey, King's X, OK, all right? Uncle? Hey, come on, Lionel. Hey, man. Uncle, OK? Hey, what's wrong with you, man? Hey, 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 come on! Life, do you know that? Lionel, calm down. Calm down, calm down. You, you put me in the middle between the American Nazi party and the mob, and you say, calm down, I'm going to kill you. Whoever you are, I'm going to catch you and kill you. Reason can never prevail in an atmosphere of violence. Don't you just love this guy? Don't you love him? You know, Lionel, you're being very juvenile about this whole thing. Okay, so maybe it's time I was a little juvenile. I'm tired of being a doormat for everybody. I'm gonna start doing the stuffing. And you're gonna be my first customer. Ah, two wrongs never make a right. Uh, whatever happened to the golden rule? You know, things like uh, live and let live. Do unto others. Uh, don't strike out in anger. We're all going to get murdered. You know that, don't you? Lionel? It's the minister, Lionel. He's dead. That's no minister. He's a Nazi. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. How can this be happening? Don't cry. Don't cry. I never met anyone like you before. Never. Is he dead? Forget it. I told you to get out of here. Hey, man. You're mad at me. <laughs> I, I can get behind that. I mean, things have been a little strange, but look, do you believe in situational time warps, Lionel? That's where space and time come together in little eddies of disaster, sometimes sweeping innocent lives into areas of total darkness. Gibberish! Gibberish! You see, that's the kind of stuff that gets me mad! All right, come on, man. Stay frosty, okay? Atta boy. Ah, ah, ah. Let's see who this guy is. Good idea. Loose in his pockets. Come on. You find anything? Yes. Give me the cards. Arrival Friday, E. Brandt, Aero Paraguayas, gate 38, 7 a.m. E. Brandt, I don't know who that is. Look for a secret compartment. A secret compartment? Come on. No, look, Nazis are cornballs, and cornballs go for that sort of thing. I want you to look for a secret compartment area. Don't be angry. I'm not angry with you, right? Voila. Voila. Oh, man, you're not going to believe this. It seems like this guy was Hitler's own personal doctor. He took Hitler's getaway money when everything was caving in over a million in diamonds. Good, good. Now we have Adolf Hitler's doctor. What more can we ask for? It just seems to sort of round out the whole caper. And would you stop acting like I put this whole thing together? I wasn't even born when this gig started. I'm really sorry I got you messed up with this, man. You're not going to believe this, but I I'm really not a bad guy. Uh, you should never do your own commercials. It reeks of insincerity, and I still don't know who you are. All right, well, my real name is E.L. Turner. You see, E.L. stands for Early Leroy. You see, sort of, um, I was born in a taxi, so my mother called me early. 
Now, Lionel, that's no excuse, but you tried going through life with a joke name, and it distorts you. So what are we gonna do now? Well, I don't know, Lionel. I guess that's up to you. Well, what are we gonna do? We can't just do nothing. We aren't gonna do nothing. All my life, whenever I've come to a stop sign, I've stopped. This once, I'm gonna keep going. If this Nazi war criminal is planning to come into the country, then one way or another, I'm going to stop him. White zone is for loading and unloading of passengers only. No parking, please. What's going on here? What is all this? Do I know? Hey, look, Martha. You stay inside the car and watch the money. We'll check this out. All right, now, Martha, you stay inside the car and watch the money, and we'll check this out. Wow. All right, let's go. OK, OK. Team coming in. I think that's them now. I know what he's doing. I know what he's doing. These old Nazis have a lot of political juice in Paraguay. Earhart Brand, he's going in with a track team. Mm -hmm. See, athletes don't go through immigration. They just handle the passports to a yeah. team coach, and he puts the whole bunch through in two minutes. Says who? I was on the Pomona College pistol team. We'd match in Mexico once, and that's the way it works. Pistol team? Pistol team. Are you? Yes. You know, Lana. When I first met you, I just had you figured for another brown shoe. Brown shoe? What's yeah, brown shoe? Uh, that's a person in three-piece suit, brown shoes, Dow Jones Square type person. Are you insulting me? No, not insulting me. You're a marksman. Yes. Bang, bang, shoot him up. We got you covered. That's not, sort of... Not people, targets. We can use the karate, right? Mr. Can... Okahamu says that karate should never be used in anger. Mr. Okanamu Okahamu is grossly misinformed. Strategy meeting. Those guys are killers. We've got to call the cops. We can't call the cops. Why not? Well, you see, in every story, there's a plausibility factor. And believe me, this one has no plausibility. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? Well, let me give you a hypothetical situation. A what? Let's say you walk up to this cop, and you say to this flatfoot, uh, excuse me, officer, but Hitler's doctor is coming to town. And a neo-Nazi party is in this airport at this very moment to meet him. Now, Sam D'Augusta's nephew and about 50 of his thugs are here, and they're going to fight it out over some diamonds that the Nazi party is fencing through the underworld. Now, what have you got? The truth. Now, you got a low plausibility factor. Now, that gives this cop two options. One, he can believe you and risk being laughed off the force. Or he can wrap you up in newspapers, ship you off to the lollipop factory where you can watch television, play cards, with a bunch of Napoleon hats. It's the money, isn't it? If I tell the cops, you lose the money. You're a three-piece suit, you know that? And you're going to wind up in some county mall with a tag on your toe because you haven't got a clue as to what you're doing. When I try, I can be very plausible. Brown Pardon me, officer. Yeah, what is it? My name is Lionel Whitney. That man over there with a the medical bag in the glasses is Erhard Brandt, Hitler's doctor. Hitler's dead body, or didn't you hear? No, no, in Germany, 30 years ago, he's a war criminal. I know it sounds nuts, but he's trying to get in this country illegally, and there are members of the Nazi party here right now, along with underworld figures who are... Forget it. Uh, never mind, forget everything I said. Let's go. Make a move and I'll ship you. I'm getting married on Saturday. Shut up. Take him to the bus.
bridegroom. I don't know what you think you're doing, but you're in deep, deep trouble. I know about Hitler's doctor, and I've told others. And you can kill me if you want to, but others will stop you. I want that money. Where is it? I don't have it. We have our ways of finding out these things. I'm being held prisoner here on some hells. Those men are not what they seem to be. That's Hitler's doctor, that man right there. We can do something. Did you see him? Did you see him? Let's sit him back. I have no more time. Where's the money? I gave it to the police. If you don't tell us where it is by the time this bus stops, you're dead. I have nothing more to lose. The white zone is for loading and unloading of passengers only. No parking. They have him. He's in the bus. I know. I saw him. I told him to forget it. No, he wouldn't listen. Now look at him. We should call the police. No, I can't do that. They'll kill him. Tell you what. You take this and you get in the car. Follow that bus. Now, when you see the tail lights start blinking, start throwing the money out the window. Do what? But don't ask me. You don't know what I've been through for this money. Just do what I say. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to drive the bus. You got a flat. Huh? I said you got a flat on the inside left back tire there. Come on, I'll show you. Well, come on! Just a minute, folks. See? There's nothing wrong with that. You rolled over there and I saw you, man. Go up under there and take a look. And give me a hat, I'll hold it for you. This may not be no joke, mister. <laughs>
crazy. But I'm not that crazy. Let's go. Now you can tell him. Come on, Wick. <clears throat> this, this man was Hitler's doctor. He escaped from Germany with a million in diamonds. The neo-Nazi party de made a deal with Sam the Augusta to fence diamonds, but Sam didn't pay off. And, are you listening to me? These Nazis made a deal with the Mafia to fence diamonds in this country and... W what are you doing? Wait a minute, this is the truth. E.L., help me. What are you doing? E.L. Mars asked and track security. What's going on here? Can I help you folks? I don't know. I think we should move the separation. Two trials instead of one. No, 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 no. If I get tried along with the L, then the judge will have to be more lenient with his sentence, right? Look, and that's, that's suicide. Just dragging yourself down with me. Would you tell him? Yeah, he's right. Wait a minute. You said that since we gave back the money, and since we did end up catching a German war criminal and ten mobsters and neo-Nazis, that the judge might go easy. Okay, I'll see what I can do. You got a job, Turner? Oh, half a dozen, sir, but uh, none of which I'm licensed or commissioned to do. Yes, sir. but he's very, very good at all of them. Show him ten speed. The move to separate is Neil Rampertine. Now, I realize you have a difficult precedence here, but if you cite Massachusetts v. Morris Wilcox, you might get the judge to buy it. I know that case. You do. You're a jailhouse lawyer, huh? No, sir. Two years, Yale Law. I was bounced out for rigging a student election and skipping to Tijuana with the funds. You should have been with me, Lionel. Is this guy on a level? Almost never. God, you wanted me to bring me this. Yes, thank you. Is that all you want? Yeah, that's all. You know, I'd have an easier time of it, Mr. Turner, if you had a legitimate job. The judge may find it very difficult to OI you, especially if he thinks you're just going to hit the bricks and start up your con games again. Tell the judge he's going to be an employee of the Lionel Whitney Agency. Okay, I'll see what I can do. What kind of agency is the Lionel Whitney Agency? It's, uh, well, I've given this a lot of thought, yeah. and, uh, I'm going to take out a license and become a private detective. Private eyes? Mm hmm Yeah? Yeah. See, Lionel, why don't we make it a talent agency? You know, there's a lot of scams you can run on talent, man. We can make look, a lot look, of money, look, too. you're through with con games, okay? I mean, if you work in my agency, everything is straight up and up. I don't know. What do you mean? Private eyes, huh? Yeah, it's private eyes, right? you and I. Hey, you know that might not be too bad. There's some great scams you can run as private eyes. No, you know, like no, both no, no scams. Case, no both, both ends. ends. No. no, we're straight up. That's the way Mark Savage does it. It's the way I do it. It's the way we'll do it. How about it? Are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, we'll be a, we'll have a minute, you know? Ten speed and brown shoe. E.L., want to hear something great? Hey, look, don't leave me nothing out of the book. No, no, but this is really great. It's kind of me and Martha. I love all this right, stuff. All right, all right, all right. But look, just keep it cool, all right? I understand, but these guys, they don't understand the sort Savage of says that all's well that ends well. But this one had ended with Charlene back in New York and me with a lump in my throat. Oh, yeah, I was going to make it. I was going to be okay. But all the rest of my days, I'd carry her with me like a 20-pound weight on my heart. I'd smell that perfume wafting up out of my dreams to sting my cheek with tears. Yeah, I was going to be okay. She was gone, but I was still... Mark Savage, Private Eye. It's great, huh? It's magnificent, man. <laughs>